electric vehicles for a moment and the effort that the Biden administration is undertaking to force them into your life. It is really crazy what's happening. Uh, you've got a, a story this week out of the Washington Free Beacon headlined Biden Energy Secretary used gas powered car to reserve public charging station, prompting police call. The author of that story is Colin Anderson, and he joins us now. Colin, good to have you with us, sir. Colin. Yep, right here, Vince. Thanks for having me. Can there he is. Me? Hey, yeah, man, it's, it's great to have you with us today. Tell us about uh, Jennifer Granholm, uh, how she's been pushing these electric vehicles and what you caught her doing. Yeah, so uh, she went on a tour earlier this summer uh, of some southern states that was meant to promote electric vehicles. She had spent much of the spring and summer uh, telling the American people that if they're going on a summer trip, they should do it in an EV. And to her credit, uh, she put her money where her mouth is, and she went out on uh, such a road trip. I think the problem for her is that uh, the result showed Americans particularly why they, they shouldn't do such a thing. Um, she was making a drive uh, from Columbia, South Carolina, over to Athens, Georgia. It's not too far of a drive. It's, it's just about three hours. Uh, not the sort of thing that should be particularly difficult. It can be in an electric car. And so she had to stop uh, on the way just outside of Augusta to charge her car. The problem is, as we have reported in the Free Beacon often, as we've talked about on the show, uh, those public charging stations can be quite tricky. And so her advanced staff was a few minutes down the road ahead of her. Uh, they realized very quickly that she was not going to be able to charge. There wasn't enough space, which is often the case. A broken charger at this particular station. It was very crowded. It takes a very long time to charge. And so her staff decided that what they would do is they would take one of uh, their gas-powered cars, I believe it was just a, an everyday Toyota Corolla in this case, and they would block out uh, a spot for Jennifer Granham uh, to pull up and, and, and sit right into to charge uh, her EV. And, uh, of course, the people behind them did not find this to be uh, particularly <laughs> exciting. And so there was one person who uh, had a, a, a baby in the car. This was like a, a very hot day in Georgia. We're talking about the South here. They called the cops uh, on, on Granholm's staff, and uh, we were able to obtain the 911 call here. And I'll tell you, it's, it's one of the more entertaining stories that I've followed in some time. It's unbelievable. So it probably goes without saying, but most of us do not have advanced teams that roll out ahead of us in an internal combustion engine vehicle to help us uh, maintain the ruse that our electric vehicle journey is going well, right? Certainly, certainly not. Um, and, and I mean, I, you know, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, the idea that this staffer, you know, I mean, look, advanced staff work. I'm not saying it's the easiest thing in the world, uh -huh. but, you know, all you're thinking here is, hey, the energy secretary is going to charge her car. We love electric cars. We yes. love charging these things. What can go wrong? And all of a sudden, when your boss pulls up, you're dealing with someone who has the police on the phone about to get a deputy to be dispatched to the charging station because of something you pulled. I mean, it's unbelievable. It really tells you a lot about the way they think about normal Americans, too, because they're like, ah, eh, whatever. You know, screw these people who want to charge their vehicles. We've got to prepare this this specific spot for Secretary Granholm. She's going to be here soon. Out of the way, peasants. And uh, here's the 911 call that you obtained, uh, thankfully, for the public's uh, comedic relief. Columbia County 911. Hi, I'm calling because I'm in the Grovetown Walmart at the charging station, and there's literally a non-electric car that is taking up a space who says they're holding the space for somebody else, and it's holding up a whole bunch of people who need to charge their cars. All right, you're at the Walmart on Sonner Way. Um, the one in Grovetown that, that has the RVs in front. Okay. Can you hear me? I see. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you. <laughs> Are they Hello? still there? They're still here, but one, one spot opened up, which is, like, not them. But there's other people who are waiting to charge, and they're still here. And they're not an electric car. And the sign says that it has to, you, can't, you can't park here unless you're charging. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. So we've gotten to a really ridiculous era, haven't we, Colin? Yeah, it's, it's quite absurd. And I think, I mean, obviously, I'm grateful for the fact that we managed to learn afterwards that this person was talking about Jennifer Granholm, because to your point, I think the people should know this. I would love to have heard the reaction from this driver if they knew 
that this wasn't just anybody pulling something for a friend that, that we were talking about government in, intervention here um, in, this, in this public charging station. And what's funny about it is we pressed uh, Grand Home and, and the Department of Energy uh, a number of times here to get some sort, any sort of response. And essentially all that they've said to us is, hey, President Joe Biden's concerned about this and he's thrown a lot of money at it, which is quite a response because I think they've thrown an action that the money hasn't really worked. Right, exactly. Right, there's a little bit more in this phone call. The 911 operator asks uh, for a description of the vehicle. What kind of car is it? It's a Corolla, it's black. Do you, see a, do you see a tag number? Um, I can get it, but they said that their person's going to be here in two minutes that they're holding the spot for. So maybe, well, now I'm charging, so I don't even care anymore, but yeah. Okay, I've got a deputy on the way. So they had to send a deputy. Do we know what the result of that interaction was? Did the police have to confront Secretary Granholm or anything? Yeah, so the police told us that they did indeed send a deputy. I think in this case, uh, the, the use of these charging stations, of course, uh, is a, a matter of uh, a private policy and not necessarily state or local law. So I believe that the uh, sheriff's department uh, eventually determined that uh, there was nothing that they could do here, no arrest. They did dispatch an officer, though, um, and we asked for any sort of uh, footage. Unfortunately, we're told that there is not any. So all we're going to have to, to go off of in this case is the uh, the 911 call. But uh, I think I'm, I'm quite happy that we managed to get that. Yeah, I mean, you know, Granholm is uh, like such a bubbly, corrupt person, isn't she? I mean, the, like remember early in the administration, she had all of this uh, investment in an electric bus company that she didn't divest from as the administration was pushing all of this, uh, this EV spent expenditures by the uh, federal taxpayers. She then eventually divests, and I believe that didn't that bus company end up collapsing, and she got out well ahead of the collapse. Yes, yeah, so that company that you're referring to, Proterra, they had indeed uh, filed for bankruptcy. Obviously, their their stock price took quite a massive hit uh, as a result. I think, uh, thankfully for Jennifer Granholm, as you have mentioned here, uh, she had sold her stock before then, uh, but she did not sell it uh, until the, the Biden administration decided that they would prop up this company on uh, a number of occasions. I believe Biden at one point said uh, that this company was going to help the United States secure the future. Uh, people were very, very excited about the, the prospects of such a company with government on its side. And uh, of course, yes. Jennifer Granholm got out right at the right at the exact perfect time. And I think we've seen that with a number of government officials. Yeah, it's almost like a, a Hunter Biden business scheme in some ways, because Joe Biden showed up at at the Proterra plant and was uh, you know, was hawking this thing, or at least did a, a virtual tour or something, but it, it, he was promoting this product uh, and it juiced up the share price of Proterra and Jennifer Granholm made out like a bandit. And now what does she care? She's not even invested in the company anymore. So it, it's fine if it collapses. It's an important point. And I think anytime you're talking about this government money going out of the door, you have to follow it. And we've done that quite a bit at the Free Beacon. And, and, and it's it's stunning. I think the, the number of occasions where you see, you know, very, very large, big name billionaire donors on the left uh, who just so happen to be invested in all of these companies that are getting, you know, billions and billions of dollars in subsidies, if not direct support from the Biden administration. I think yes. that's emblematic of the green energy industry in general. And and uh, one other one other thing here, you know, you, you have got this great 911 call that it really exposes what a phony Jennifer Granholm is. They have to send government employees out ahead of her with an internal combustion engine. Thus, uh, all they're doing is putting out more emissions by virtue of both the construction of the electric vehicle and the internal combustion engine out ahead of them uh, and stopping American citizens from using charging station in cars that the government's forcing down their throats. That's all happening. But it reminds me also of Pete Buttigieg's experience with the same issue. Remember, Pete Buttigieg pretended that he was riding his bicycle to work to be green when in fact he was riding in an SUV until he was a block away and then he would get out like he was a kid being dropped off at school but didn't want to be embarrassed by his parents. And then he would get on the bike and pretend he had ridden the whole way. I'm glad you mentioned it. There was a, an NPR reporter who was on this uh, specific EV tour with Jennifer Granholm. And at, at one point they take a photo uh, from the back of her EV that she was presumably driving or riding in. And you see right behind her car, this massive caravan of huge blacked out Chevy Suburbans. Obviously, they're not plugging <laughs> in for the chargers. They're about as, 
as gas guzzling as you can get. I, of course, have no problem with that. They're great vehicles. They're comfortable. I yeah. take them as often as I can. Yeah. But again, pretty, pretty funny situation. Yeah, it's amazing. Anyway, thank you for this. It's hilarious and uh, I think really revealing of, of what kind of people these these people are. Thank you very much, uh, Colin Anderson over at the Washington Free Beacon. Such a great news site. Thank you, sir.